Well, hello everyone. This is Barry's Best Hunting. I'm Mike and I do bees. Welcome to my bee yard here in Southeast Louisiana. Remember, my videos are not how-to videos. They're just a vlog. They're how I do videos. And uh, it is time to make a quick little clip. All right, I told you I was taking a break and I did. I took a break and I'm still gonna take a break, but uh, I have caught up on a lot of stuff out in the yard. And I have caught up on a few things that I wanted to finally get done. Like this, for example. Yeah, so what I did was, uh, that's a bike that I, it's got some sentimental value to me and uh, it'd been sitting for a long time and you know anybody knows anything about engines when they sit uh, and i'd had two stroke non-ethanol high octane race gas in it but uh it didn't matter it uh it was still a mess needed to be gone through and uh cleaned up and fixed and repaired still a couple parts i got to get done on it but uh, you know things like that finally got a chance to catch up on get my rv trailer in shape get another little bike working clean up some stuff get my yard caught up pine straw and mulch all my stuff so got a lot of that done so i'm pretty happy about that just wanted to um go ahead and run y'all out here real quick uh, as we snatch off some feeders and show you a little clip of uh a last minute honey super that i did um just was a didn't want to leave my honey supers on don't like to leave them on i did leave one on but i i, could, I didn't have the heart to take it off because they'd already put some brood up in it and that's okay brood doesn't it doesn't bother me that i get brood in them but if i can help it i like to and I wasn't able to really help it. They had food in there, plenty of stores and some brood, so why disturb them? It's on top of a single. So I just went ahead and fed it and uh, got it heavy up, heavy enough up and, uh, and we'll just um, leave it on there. But the other one, uh, I went ahead and snatched it off and poured the two to one to them. And that's at the pond. And uh, man, they, they bulked up quick. They really did. They took um, three gallons, I think three or four gallons. And uh, man, it really pumped the weight up on that hive. I think I fed, out of eight hives, I fed them 150 pounds of sugar total, uh, you know, mixed in, in as two to one syrup. But uh, yeah, so so really hadn't been messing with the bees at all. So here's a couple clips uh, that we're working on. One today and one I did the other day. Yeah, so by the time you think you're really done with everything, boom, you're not really done. There's always work to do. Well, no, not really. What I did was, I got to go still pull feeders off of hives, and uh, but I'm done. I'm I'm laid back and stepping back from the hives. So I had a, a super back there. And it was on a hive at the pond, so I got to extract that honey. It's goldenrod honey. So that's what I'm gonna do is really quickly today just extract this bit of a super. It's only about seven frames in there that have any in it. Goldenrod has a really really unique taste. It's not bad. Everybody says it's horrible. I've, I haven't found it to be horrible. It's just very unique. So for uncapping, I'll use this. This is a setup I got from Kelly Bees years ago. And they still sell these. Man Lake has them and other companies have these. But this little board is pretty neat. It has this little screen in the bucket. This hangs on the edges here. All right, so and put it on a bucket with a gate valve. But rather than get my whole uncapping tank all sticky again, since it's all cleaned and put up, I'm going to go ahead and just use the bucket for uncapping. Now, I will use my extractor. Um, this one, even though it's bigger and all that, versus that one. Because, quite frankly, this Maxon is easier to clean. It really is. You basically unplug this motor right there. This slides off. That's your cord. Then you unbolt the motor with these two bolts right there and it pops off of this quick disconnect and then i just unbolt this and this and that pops off and the whole basket comes out and you can hose it all out let the bees clean it then hose it all out and you're done you can tell it's goldenrod look at the yellow these are older frames look how yellow it is i've had it sitting about a week now and i kept my room really dry and warm but uh, i like it 
Sit this in a notch. I'm doing it pretty high up, so it's kind of hard to do, but it's a good little setup. I had, I was using this up until I had probably 15 hives. It works. It's a little messier. It works just fine. Like I said, there's only about seven frames and got, uh, and then the rest are kind of like this, just kind of halfway, but I only take, you gotta watch cutting where there's no caps it tears the cone so I'll just cut just where it's capped and I'll take the scratching fork or uncapping fork and do the rest see some of them older people take these things and run them like this they just run it up the whole frame it's like amazing how good and proficient they are with them hard when it's up here head height doing this. I need to put it a little lower. Whoa, that's the only problem with the bucket. You'll drop some out. This is what happens when you drop some out. You see? Falls out. Oh my god. Some pungent stuff. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this spinning. I got like one more frame, so you know I knew there was. It's only what eight frames. Really, a couple of those aren't full. Probably even going to yield maybe a gallon of honey, but I figure I'll spin it out. Oh, you can smell the goldenrod. But the main thing I wanted to do, guys, was just show you this little setup. This this was a neat little setup. Um, but these things work really good. Just I used it for, oh, I guess three years I used it until I finally got to where I had a, a kitchen stack full of supers and it wasn't going to work anymore. But uh, really nice little setup. Hey y'all, I got a real quick little task to do, uh, figure out quickly, shoot a little clip of video on it, I've been shooting little clips here and there, um, but uh, I need to go pull some feeders off, uh, all the hives are done for feed, and I think it just hit 60, it's gorgeous, we've had some days in the 30s uh, here about two days ago, uh, three or four days in the 30s, that was really nice, uh, they put on weight really well. I think I fed eight hives out of 25 and uh, everybody else was heavy and now those that I fed they put on some good weight um, so I'm gonna go snatch those off real quick and get them uh, situated that'll be the last time uh, these bees get opened um, for the winter yeah 60 degrees sun shining up from the east Pull a feeder down there. Got to pull a feeder right there. And I really do like the high top feeders. I should, you know, it's just uh, this is one of the drawbacks to them is now you got to pull them. You can leave them on, on over the winter. The problem is down here they'll generate a lot of condensation because of the plastic getting wet um, or cold and hot. And uh, the other issue is they'll begin to bring uh, build uh, what you call it um, comb up in there. You don't want uh, you don't want to build comb up in there. So I've left them on over winter, but it just gives another place for beetles to hide, residual beetles and such as that. So I like to take them off because they're going to come off sooner or later anyway. I'm gonna have to be quick today though because uh, we can we can start robbing frenzies if we're not careful. Uh, yeah, they're waking up. Who I got a clean old smoker. You ever use pine straw? Well, one thing about it, it puts out some serious resin, uh, uh, residue, whatever, from the resin, from the sap. Uh, I gotta clean the old smoker. 
it sat for a while, so I just busted it loose. But uh, yeah, I cleaned it a while back. But what I'll do is I normally take my burner. I'm not gonna clean it now, like I said, but, and I'll burn this stuff, catch it on fire, and dries it all out. I'll do the same on the front. I do it later in the winter. Do that and burn it real good. And it'll all be dry and crispy, and I'll just scrape it off. Does well, but I like mine on the outside. It just it I like that way. I can always keep it packed with fresh straw, and it, of course it deforms it a little bit. But uh, unless it's got sentimental value, you know, if it's an old smoker you got inherited, man, I surely wouldn't light it the way I do, because you'll uh, you'll wrinkle the metal. But y'all seen me do this. Some of y'all seen me do this. Get it red hot, and off we go. There it goes. Now again, if you got a good smoke or a smoker that's sentimental to you or passed down from somebody, definitely wouldn't recommend this way of lighting it, that's for sure. Because it will it does deform it just a little bit or not. But it's going. I'm gonna use plenty of smoke. Because these can tend to be ornery when they haven't been open for a while and it's been cool weather and they know when there's no nectar and when it's robbing season. They ain't dummies. So I uh, don't know how they'll be. And I don't I'm not going at doing an inspection so it really doesn't matter. And I want them out of the screen, it really doesn't matter. How much smoke I use. We can talk about too much smoke. Too much smoke for what? I've said that before in a video. For who? It depends what you're doing. What time of year it is. Oh yeah, that's that's a there's a beetle. Got him. All right. There they come. Look at them all coming on up now. That smoke had them driven down. And I, oh yeah, man, this thing is heavy. Wow, good deal. They bulked up really well. Let's get them closed up. Again, the bees know, they know it's robin season. Let's yank another feeder off really quick. All right, bug farmer, if you were watching this video, yes, here's my Carbon Durants and what we talked about. Be interested to see. That's what we'll do. Let the bees come on, crawl on out of there, throw a little smoke in there, and uh, move on to the next ones. Oh, wow. Plenty bulked up. Plenty bulked up. 60, 70 pounds easy. They're up here guarding that honey. Let's get them covered back up. There we go. All right, same thing, and repeat. Something to watch on that hive is it's uh, it's a little lighter in the bottom uh, than it probably should be. So it's got a lot of weight on top. That's okay. They'll move into the top, but what you don't want is them into the top too early. Not a big deal. I just got to monitor them. And I'll monitor all these about once a month. Come out here and just uh, for the next three months, just come out here and feel them. Maybe more often. But definitely don't want everything in the top, but the colony's small. So technically they could even go down to one brew chamber, but that's no biggie. They'll grow into it when I reverse uh, when I reverse brew chambers in, uh, into January. And uh, they'll have a chance to fill up both. But just gotta watch those that are a little bit top heavy and really you really want you really want your weight, you know, through the whole high. But it's manageable down here. We have warm enough winters we can we can fix things when we need to. That's all there is to it. 
Just a quick little V task that we got to do today. Let me go get these two next door. That way I can be done. I'll go to the pond later. Check that out. Bees, dead bees. Uh, that was the only feeder I had any dead bees in right there. So this is the problem with the old style. The, see how that screen, see if you can see it. I don't know if it's gonna focus. The screen moves. The, the, basically the silicone has given up. And in the fall feeding, for some reason, in that two to one, these bees push through that screen. So basically they push through. Now the new ones don't do this. So there's your issue. What most likely actually happened, they got in here and they couldn't get back out. That's what happened. And they starved once the feed was gone. That's what happened. So we'll dump them out. Not a lot, but still more than you want. Got good bee numbers in there. Yeah, good, good hives, good nests. These are heavy, they bulked up really, really well. Uh, these got three gallons and they really, really bulked up well. Very pleased with that. All right, let's get some lids on. Yeah, must have, that's what happened. That silicone gave loose on there. The new style, you don't have to worry about that though. So I put my my uh, extractor out uh, yesterday around lunchtime, right over here. All the bees are still around there. They know it was there yesterday. It cooled off, and when it cooled off last night, yesterday evening, there was probably quite a few hundreds of bees still in there, and they all went straight to the bottom. And, and basically, what they did was they clustered down the bottom to keep warm. And of course, you know they weren't moving, so I came out. Put the lids on the extractor, plugged the holes, and brought them into warm shop. So they're in there buzzing around inside now, ready to get out. But I figured, hey, while well, I leave them out here in the cold, I'll put it back out today and uh, let them fly on back home with their load of honey and let the rest of them finish cleaning it. I think it's about clean anyway, but let's put it out. Last night I was in there blasting some music, bottling up some honey for the market today. And uh, they were warming up. It was probably 74 degrees in there. And look, they probably woke up and started dancing. Here they come. They're still kind of clustered. Plus, some of the hives, they don't, they're different from different hives, so some of them are in there fighting because they're woken up now. Here they come. They're coming out. There weren't a whole lot, but hey, it's worth saving. See how they were clustered up on that valve? This thing is still cold, though, this, this tank. So, here they go, waking up. Pretty cool. These are so funny. God gave us such a creation to behold. Wow. All right, guys, that's it. Glad I could make a quick video. Uh, didn't know I was gonna be that quick back on, but hey, had to do those couple things. So I'm glad you guys could join me. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this time. We got all the bees fed up. They're nice and heavy. Got a little extra goldenrod honey that is mm, quite pungent, uh, but not bad. And, uh, but yeah, all the hives are heavy. Very happy about that. Good heavy hives. Got one of them that's a little heavier on the top than I like, but we'll be checking them all as we go. Um, and usually around, oh, let's just say January, if things get really bad, we can always throw dry sugar on there. I don't care to throw dry sugar on there, but uh, it's what we do sometimes when we have to. And it's just, it's just not the best way to do it, but it is what you do when you have to. So, guys, I appreciate it once again. Hey, that last video, man, I got so many great comments. I sure appreciate you guys been following along this whole this whole uh, time since I started this thing, man. It's been great. I really, really, really appreciate all the kind, kind comments. Um, man, it's, it's been something else. So with that being said, guys, if you like the video, as always, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. It doesn't cost you a dime. Don't forget to share this video with your friends, your family, anybody that enjoys watching bees. This is Barry's Best Honey. I'm Mike, and I do bees. Y'all have a wonderful, wonderful afternoon, and happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Uh, that's coming up next week. May God bless you and your family and all that you do and all that you put your hands to. See you guys.